All right, we're back, folks. We're back for more Dingle Dang Dumble Dang pods. <laughs> we just finished Magic Crafters, so. Okay, XO, but can you live stream that game sometime in the future? Uh, yes. I wouldn't mind that at all. Oh, I would be still down for that. It is one. It is. It is one of my top ten favorite games of all time. Top five so. for me. Do you have like a written yeah. top ten, XO? No. But I imagine if I did have one, Spyro Three would be on there. Yeah, for me, I, my my one to five is fairly concrete, but everything after that, like six to ten, is like so nebulous. I have, like, it yeah. changes like day by day. Yeah, um, I'm not like a lot of other people. We're very top ten. Like, it's basically the ten games they loved most when they were a kid. Mm -hmm. for, my uh, mine will change like every two months, probably. <laughs> Well, it's funny because one game in my top five I only played when I uh, like two or three. Um, I guess it was three years ago now. It was opening out of time. It's Sly Two. It's Sly Two. No, Band of Thieves. No. I'm not even sure if that would break my top ten. It might, but it probably really it probably wouldn't. At this point, just because I'm I'm in, I'm in such an outs with that series. <laughs> just because I, I'm not sure if I would name Sly Two in my top ten. Sly Three, yes, but like Sly Two, maybe probably not. Oh, that's right. You like slide through the most. I'm so used to Jay being the only, the only other slide person I know. That, okay. Don't you mean gay? And I have I have seen your reviews for the record, so I don't know how I forgot that. Yeah, that's fine. Um, that's it. Well, yeah, there, there's like a like ten games fighting for a spot on my uh, six to ten of my top ten. Like, Ocarina of Time, I only played that game like three or four years ago, and like, that game blew me away. Really? Mm. Yeah. At how many years ago? Oh. Three to four years ago? I think I was 17. Wow, wow. Really? Like, yeah. That's... Oh, I, it's great to I don't know, I, I think it's I... not entirely impossible for games that old to blow you away even today, if you, like, first play them. It's like, just interesting how that works. Like, Just Cause 3 was on its way to blowing me away, but then the final boss completely shot the bed, and I'm just like, did I really like this game? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I don't think I've ever, like, felt such a disappointing ending that it actually made me reevaluate if I actually like the game. Uh, what is Just Cause? I've never heard of it. Oh, Just uh... Cause... It's like GTA on crack, essentially. Yeah, and it's made. It's made by Square Enix, is it not? It's made by Apple. They probably Apple published Software, it. Uh, a subs oh, yeah. I know them. Yeah, they made tech. Yeah, um, it's basically like, uh, for example, Just Cause Two. You have like a 500 square mile map with like 150 different. Uh, Settlements, whether that's like military bases, cities, or or just like uh, towns or whatever, and basically your goal is to go through each one of these and um, gradually like take out all the military uh, operations, which includes blowing up you know, giant gas tanks or blowing up just a lot of explosions of like military-based things. And then by doing a certain amount of that, you unlock a side mission, and you do the side mission, and you do enough side mission, then that unlocks a plot mission. So basically, everything kind of balances on uh, blowing shit up, and the blowing shit up is so much fun. Yeah. Would you say it is cathartic? Yes. I noticed that that's one of your favorite words. Indeed. Well, there's no there's no substitute for the word cathartic, which pisses me off because it means I have to repeat it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. Sometimes when I'm writing a script or editing a video, I, I feel like I swear I've said this before somewhere. If that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. King K. I think somebody pointed out how many times King K said the word satisfying in the Zelda retrospective. Like, well, he kind of rushed those at the door. Mm -hmm. I find I say satisfying oh, a bit too much as well, which is why I Sometimes I'll say, I'll switch it up and say like gratifying or um, or something along those lines. I try to avoid saying satisfying because I hate the way my S's come out. 
It's really weird. Mm -hmm. That's an oddly specific complaint to have about yourself. Well, d do you not hear it in my videos where it's just every time I say 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 an S word right now. All right, uh, Sonic Forces is a shitty uh, serial code. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, your C laugh is adorable, Jeff. <laughs> Seashell, see, fuck my life. She sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah, she sells she she sells seashells by the seashore. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, she, I should probably check the chat because it's been a while. Uh, nobody didn't tell you was streaming EXO. What? Okay, EXO. Um, he's gonna turn twenty years oh, old. Oh God. Uh, isn't the Just Cause series a sandbox game with RPG elements? Also, uh, wouldn't it be Patrick sounds like Bailey? Because I think SA1 pre predates SpongeBob by a year. Uh, oh yeah, one more thing. That's a Sorry. interesting thought. Oh shit! One more thing. I forgot. I went to treetops first. One more thing. I I, chase I, after that thief. One more thing I need to mention about um about uh, Just Cause uh, two and three is there's a grappling hook that lets you attach to anything, and like you have. <laughs> If you attach to something, then it, you you automatically like retract yourself towards it. So you can just like attach to a helicopter and just steal the helicopter and start shit, blowing shit up. Oh, it seems Jay is watching us now. He was earlier. Yeah, he was earlier. I he sent me a friend request, and I didn't even know you could even have friends on Twitch. So that just goes to show you how little I use this thing. I don't even have a Twitch account. <laughs> oh, I, God! I do all my live streaming on YouTube. I yeah. So just pro tip for everyone: uh, chase after this thief as soon as possible, because he's gonna show you the route to the secret. Secret. All right. You know, it kind of reminds me. Uh, have, Exo, have you played Raymond Origins? No. No? Uh, I wonder how much you'd like that. I think... I know I haven't liked any other Rayman game I've ever tried. I've never played Rayman 2 or 3, how are those? I was just looking on my shelf, and it turns out it's Rayman Legends I own. I know, but I think... Well, that, isn't Rayman that game like the, the sequel? Yes. Yeah, Raymond Legends is a sequel to Origins. Yeah, Rayman's a bit of an odd duck in that it's never been a popular franchise, but of all the games I've played, I've never played one I didn't play. Like, I, I don't like one at all. I've not played one. It's got great graphics and music, but the actual gameplay pisses me the hell off. <laughs> I don't, it's really badly designed, I think. Well, it was, an early, it was an early Ubisoft game, so you can probably understand. Yeah, I, I do wonder Well, it's how... not like the new Ubisoft games are better. Ha 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 ha. Raymond Origins yeah. and Legends are legitimately fun, so I like those. In Rayman Legends, I remember that, that one um, running level that, um, that imitated Eye for the Tiger. I just, I had the biggest smile on my face throughout yeah. the, entire, the entire thing. I just, it was so charming. Oh, but what I was about to say is that these uh, thief chasing things with, with Spyro remind me of those levels in uh, Raymond Origins, where you have to chase this chest that contains a, a crystal. Uh. And so they have these extreme parkour kind of like levels where you have to chase it. Oh. <laughs> I'm lose all my lives at this rate. Come on. Somebody say crystal. Oh god, I'm having, I'm having flashbacks. Oh god, oh god. <laughs> of course. I, of course. I apologize. I've, I've seen things I wish to unsee during my Star Fox upon. <laughs> oh. oh. Okay, I get it. Are you talking about Marcus? Hmm? Are you talking about Marcus? Uh, no. Crystal. Fox Fox X Crystal Kid? Oh, oh, no, I've never even heard of that. 
You know, the little blue guy that shows up at the end of Command? Uh, the baby? Oh. oh! Oh, Marcus, right, yeah. No. I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about the, the things I've stumbled upon while I was uh, doing the Star Fox a thon. Just things hey, I look, it's Jed! It's Jed? Jed. Yeah. Jed. Could have found an easier spot to get Jed, stuck. he did. <laughs> I like how Spiral is just like, fuck you for getting stuck here. And I just, I love how sarcastic he is. Like, for, for as little dialogue as this game has, you really do get a feel for his personality. Well, it actually has, if you like, if you count all the dragons talking to you as a cutscene, it actually has more story in it than the later games do. Well, I, I guess the cuts, the characters talk to you in the other games, too. Yeah. Well, Gotta make I, the most out of that Elijah Wood. I don't really, I don't really, um, count the ones that say, Thank you for releasing me! <laughs> Thank you for releasing me! I, when you said, uh, there's Jed, I thought you were saying there's Jeb, because someone in the chat just started singing with a word. Oh. Complete with. <laughs> Thank you for releasing yeah, but... me. I was really busting for a piss. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, these guys throw bananas at you. By the way, they throw like big banana bunches. Not right. Not banana bunches. Yeah, banana sponges. So all these all these inside references that Jeb knows about. Speaking of inside references, since you're probably not gonna play Spyro 3 on Game Mavericks, uh Fuck! Well, you are gonna start that Let's Play channel, I guess, but like what what is it about three that makes you like because I've never even seen it. what's it about three that makes you like it the most of the trilogy? It feels the most refined yep. mechanically. I find the mi the mini games in the third game to be better than the second game. I like all of the new characters pretty much, cool. with the exception of boxing with Bentley, of course. <laughs> the story I'm with everyone story else. I find is also a lot a lot better and a lot has a lot more character than previous games. It's the only story in the Spyro trilogy that has any character development whatsoever. Yeah, that's cool. Which is noteworthy on its own, and it's the only one. I feel like Ripto is, is more in is interesting in so far as how him and Spyro bounce off of each other, but in terms of how he actually affects the plot, you could remove him and it wouldn't change a thing. Mm -hmm. uh, whereas the sorceress, she has everything to do with what's going on, so actually stopping her means something. Yeah. And she has a clear, unambiguous Even... plan. She's gonna cut off all the baby dragon yeah. wings to create it to use it for an immortality spell. Whereas what what was Ripto's plan exactly? I was going to take over the world. I do have to give. I do have to say this. But Greg Berger's performance was pretty top notch. He's in, back. in both. In both. Uh, guess what, you purple pest? I'm back, and I'm <laughs> stronger than ever. <laughs> like you good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want, Riptil? Oh yeah, boss. Uh, what do we want? You want paint for your brains, you insignificant income poop? Keep talking like that, that, and I'll put you back where I found you. Unemployed and molten crater and begging for work from nasty Nork. Now, back to what I was saying. Like, because if I was Spyro at that moment, I'd be like, wait a minute, didn't I kill all of those people? <laughs> I feel like someday I should make a game, and I don't know who the villain would be, but Exo should be the voice of said villain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Just every scene, the vocal. every scene he's an impression of another character. <laughs> the villain is yeah, impressionist. He can be the impresario or something. Alright, give me Dean Bristow. Alright, give me, give me Bowser in Mario Sunshine. I do want to bring something up though regarding, you mentioned Yeti Boxing. I honestly found a way to get past those, to get past Yeti Boxing, like, are you talking about the second controller? No. Oh, I mean, alright, well, shoot. 
I discovered that if you just hold left and tap the quick punch button, eventually you'll back the other Yeti into a, into, into the corner and he won't and he won't be able to move. And just like for some reason he has trouble blocking the quick punch, and so like mm. it, you you might fail once or twice, but like it's it's done in such a way that you'll whittle his health down before he has a chance to whittle yours down. Hmm. I uh, discovered that on one of my last playthroughs. Uh, Azel, or is it Azel? Well, I don't know. 1998 Ooh. says, Ripto's plan in the second game is to take over Avalar and its inhabitants. I don't really... What that does. My problem is that he has nothing to do with what's going on in the levels. Exactly. Where he has... In this game, we're saving our dragon buddies, right? And we're getting back our treasure that Nasty Nork turned into a bunch of minions. Not to be confused with Minion from uh, Spy Kids. Uh, and... And not to be confused with those little yellow testicles. Yeah. Testicles. <laughs> they're, te they're shaped like testicles. Alright, um... Yeah, especially the really long ones. Those are my favorites. Yeah. I think. But, but now. <laughs> I, th um, I think. Sorry. Like I said in the last stream, Ripto needed to blow up an orphanage or something, or kill off a character, or. They really, like, they, the game says he's a threat, but he never actually does anything, so. It, you don't really. You don't really see why Alora's, like, so. concerned about getting rid of him when he hasn't done anything. It needs to be made clear, level by level, why he's making the inhabitants of this level suffer. It's just, all, yeah. all, all the levels... It just seems like he has nothing to do with anything that's going on. Like, all the... Like, all it, it, like I said, you could take, you could remove him from the game and it wouldn't change a thing. Yeah. All the levels, like, he has a good personality, but all the levels' plots are completely disconnected from what he's doing. Yeah, that's exactly it. And not... A, not it's like, the, one of the first levels, it's like... The Tikis have come to life and they're attacking us! And what it really should have been, and the manual implies this, it implies that Ripto is the one that made the Tikis come to life in the manual, but the game, it's never mentioned. So for all we know, they, they could have just come to life on their own without Ripto at all. When it really should have been made very obvious, Ripto is behind everything that's going on, so that you actually, you know, feel like getting rid of him. It would have made the plot much more effective, but as is, it's just like... He changes the banner on a castle. Look out. That's, that's what he does. Can't have that, uh, drab yeah. flying around. Yeah. And, and here's, a, here's another point that nobody really ever brings up. Is the fact that all of the levels in Fire 2, they look so different, and so it doesn't really feel like a coherent world. So like what Ripto feel, what it feels like Ripto's doing is just throwing up a few banners in the home world and calling it a day, whereas all these other levels, because they don't feel connected, it doesn't feel like Ripto's affecting anybody. Whereas in, for example, Spiral One, uh, all the levels kind of per like every uh, home world feel artistically consistent, and so they feel like one cohesive world, and so it feels like Nasty Nork has actually conquered the place. Yeah. Ganasty Gnork. Let's see. You understand what I'm saying? Now what about this Ganasty Gnork character? <laughs> but do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, I, I get... Well, I mean, like, on one hand I see what you're saying, but on the other hand I... I get... I I feel like the, the, the greater variety to Avalar's locations was kind of neat as well. But like, if there was some way to tie them all together and just that little bit, like maybe throwing up uh, Ripto's banners in every level. Yeah, even that would have gone a long way. I uh, whoops, I forgot to turn the sound down. Um, yeah, just ha have, it, have it so we know that Ripto is in some way affecting all these people and it would have made him infinitely better. And he really should have had an army. He really should have invaded Avalar mm -hmm. and have, like, I don't know, it doesn't have to be like the Tyranoids from, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be like that where you only fight the same three enemies, but it would be nice if there could have been 
Ripto minions, at least in the game, so that when you're killing enemies, there's some connection to you. Oh, uh, Nick's in yeah. the chat. Nick says, hey, Mike. Uh, uh we're... Where is... Oh, uh, that was a while ago. Hey, I'll add him in real quick. Um... Was he, was he messaging you? No, he's in the, in the Twitch chat. I mean, oh, he says, I'm on. Oh, gotcha. I'm on Discord, I, uh, you know, he yeah. says. And, um... I just added him. He'll he'll show up. And I feel like another another just minor issue I have with it is the fact. Well, oh shit! I f I keep forgetting. I need to sh tweet the stream out. Did I mess things up? No, no, no. You're f you're good. Okay. Uh, I just kept forgetting to, to tweet out the stream. Get your dark hooded gamer. Yeah. Wish I wasn't that. Wish I could just be black hooded gamer, but no. Fuck! Oh, good. God damn it! Fuck. If you click anywhere outside of the tweet box, it like deletes it. Yeah, hate that. All right. Yeah, so you so you've encountered that too. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I right. yeah, it's it not just pisses me off, especially when I'm writing okay. a reply that I actually have to think about. Oh. Hmm. Let's see. Uh, TGX oh, is disconnected. Oh, he's back. So, um, TGX. Okay, what just happened? <laughs> me, no, no. Actually, ooh, I'll be right back, guys. I gotta do something. Sorry, I'm still alive. Right? Do something! Yeah, there's some draw distance shenanigans with the floor back there. You see that? PS1 can't handle its awesomeness. Uh, Am I coming through? Is that. What? You are? Am I coming through? Yeah, okay, you're coming good. through. Nick, are you there? Sorry, I was having yeah. connection issues. Uh, so Nick, this is TGX of the Generation Extreme. He's a friend of Jay's and a fan of Spyro. Hello. Hello. Although, I, I prefer just to be called TGX. I think the Generation Extreme, that's long in the past. <laughs> So, mm. I think I really messed things up with the, the tattoo review. I was hoping to have it done tonight, and I, I rendered it and everything, but I noticed something. The footage was too fast, and the, the video was faster than the audio in some, like, game clips. So, you know, you would hear the, music huh? and the sound effects, but it would be lagging behind the video. Now, at first, I thought maybe it was because I rendered it with, like, a customized temp. At like 60 frames. I thought maybe, oh, it's just going through the frames twice as fast. Uh, but no, I, I think I know why now. See, none of these videos and none of these clips were cropped to fit properly inside a screen. So I, I went and cropped one of them, and then I just copied and pasted those event attributes to all the other oh. clips. Oh, God. Unfortunately, that clip was compressed a little bit. Uh, but by that I just mean that I scrunched it up so it'd be faster. So, yep, yep, that'll do it. I've made mistakes like that before, that's always the worst. So I'm gonna have to, um, not only go a few hundred steps back, but meticulously go through cropping each of the couple hundred clips, uh, one at a time, by hand. Each one takes like, you know, 15 seconds to do, so. Oh boy. Seems I'm going to be at this for another day or so. I thought this review would only take me like two days. It's taken me the better part of a week. It's like it's, yeah. it's a wonder I don't make videos a lot anymore. I just don't. I can't. I don't have the time to juggle. Editing. Other things. Editing is the worst. Yep. Although for me, I think live action is the worst. 
Oh, there's a reason I don't do those sections scripted anymore. And that is basically it. Anyway, uh, sorry, but I guess I'm not gonna be around for the stream because I have got more video editing to do tonight. Ah, uh, shitty. No. Oh. Hopefully I can finish editing it before I have to go to bed, and then maybe t tomorrow, like, first thing in the morning, I'll render it and then put on that. That'll only take, like, five hours. So it'll be up around the middle of the day. The Black Hooded Gamer uh, has returned. Black. Yeah, I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> anyway, you guys, have you ever seriously made a mistake like that? Oh yeah. I uh, curved the Kirby Superstar video. Um, so lately, I've been doing this thing called uh, proxy editing, which is where you, which is where you basically make like SD copies of HD footage, because it makes it easier to edit, right? Because uh, the problem with Vegas is that it can't, for some reason, the GPU acceleration is complete dog shit, and it <laughs> cannot play 1080p 60 footage, you know, at the proper frame rate and whatnot, or even at a decent one. So you have to scrunch up the quality all the way. But even that's not going to help you when you're in the crop editor, or not the crop editor, the trimmer, trying to find gameplay clips that you need. Hmm. So what you do is you convert all your footage to like 360p. And then use that footage to edit and then replace them in Vegas with the HD footage before you render. So that means that you'll get faster playback in the trimmer and whatnot. Problem with that is that sometimes it changes it changes like the aspect ratio or it cuts out certain things. So I had this uh, 360p proxy footage I was using for Kirby, and I had built the cropping around that. So with the moment I swapped it over to the to the HD footage, I realized that part of the image got cropped off for the 360p proxies, and then I basically had to go through and change the cropping for every clip in the video. It's just such a, a pain. Is there... okay, am I seriously just gonna have to click the back button a bunch of times, which means I'll have to edit other things like annotations back into the video, or can I just right-click on the clip and somehow undo the, you know, the event attribute. Go to right click properties and then play speed and then set that to one. What? Go right click the clips, go to properties. What is going on with my stream bitrate right now? Oh, what's. Yeah, it's. it's my internet connection should be fine. The uh, good news is that. Uh, the good news is that I'm recording this, so it should be fine in post, but... Yeah, it does look like it's fucking up a bit, doesn't it? Now, uh, let's see, the first Spyro is okay, Spyro 2 is still amazing, it's great. See, I don't get that logic, because if you want something that's straightforward and focused, then the first game is clearly the best, and if you want something that's varied, then Spyro 3 is clearly the best. Yeah, uh, Spyro 2 seems like it takes aspects from 1 and 3 but uh, doesn't use them to the fullest extent that it could've. Like, in terms of, like, the the main level design, I think it's fine. It's just when it gets to kind of the other stuff, it feels like... I don't know, maybe it's because I've played Spyro 3, so now I'm kind of spoiled and expect a little more. So when you go back to Spyro 2, it's just kind of like... It's by far the shortest game in terms of just how much content there is, but they drag it out more. That's what it feels like to me, anyway. Like, this game has way more levels, it feel, felt like. I always like Spyro, Spyro 2 more just because I feel like it is... I guess there's more to do than just run around and bat enemies, I don't know. Plus there's more, more dialogue, more different NPCs. I'll be back on that. Well, this... That kind of stuff makes me appreciate too a bit more, I think. I I get it. It's just like in terms of No. I don't I don't know how how somehow Spyro 3 is too varied. Yeah. It's like even when you get down to the down to the brass tacks, like 
core gameplay for the other characters is, is essentially the same as as with Spyro. Like you run around and collect gems and beat up, beat up enemies. It's just the way that you do those things is different. And I guess with Sergeant Bird you can fly. That's that's about the most different it gets. So wait, the ever play styles in uh, Spyro 3D are, you know, for the most part, pretty similar to Spyro, you would say. Yeah, I mean there are differences, which is, you know, justifies having the characters to begin with. Like Sheila, she's a kangaroo. Her focus is more on like the platforming. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bentley, he's more of the, kind of the brute force guy. You you beat people up with a club, and you can like spin your club to deflect objects and. Uh, Agent 9, he's the shooter character, so he's got kind of the Mega Man Legends sort of controls to him. And all of his... and each character gets four sections. Um, and that does include ones where it's like a little bit different. Like, Bentley, one of his four sections is boxing, which is which was a waste for him. Not only... you know, it's not just because the, the boxing minigame itself sucks, but also because it's like took away from one extra full level we could have had with Bentley instead of that. And... No. But Sheila gets four really good sections. Bentley... Or, I mean, Sergeant Bird gets pretty good sections. A lot of people don't seem to know that Sergeant Bird can strafe in midair. <laughs> like, you hold L1 or R1, and then that helps you dodge the cat witches. Well, apparently a lot of people don't know that. Well... What I do is I just stick in one spot and let them come to me and just start knocking them off one by one. And the stream's getting yeah. a bit, uh, messy. Yeah, there's something... what's going on with my internet connection? Uh, like I said, folks, the, the, up, the actual upload will be in full 1080p and whatnot with a good bit rate, so. Jay's asking, by the way, are you playing on a disc or PSN? I'm playing on the PlayStation 1. Tell him it's the OG hardware. Jay, it's the OG hardware. Don't you mean the gay station? Ha <laughs> <laughs> <And> Gay's reviews. <laughs> Prey station. Uh, the PlayStation. Great story, but, uh, graphics suck. I'm <laughs> oh. I guess it's looking right. prettier now. Did you lower bitrate or something? No. Oh. Just probably my, my connection probably caught up. Uh. Uh, remember, there will be no issues in the actual upload. Let's see, where am I? Uh, oh, I hope so. Yeah, the VOD will be in like... F well, the the original video clip will be in like 20... 26, 27 thousand kilobits per second. <laughs> but the moment, it, the moment it gets uploaded to YouTube, it's gonna scrunch it down to like 8,000 kilobytes per second, which is like horrendous. Well, that's I don't even heinous. think it ups... YouTube does it's, that. it's the most heinously anus thing I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite lines by him. Right up there with this, this <sighs> is shitting me. Thank you for relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> kills me every time. The assholeians bow down to this piece of shit. Or the the original Fred Fox bit that was pretty funny. Thank you for releasing. That's what someone said after someone finished jerking them off. Ha ha ha. That's the most... Oh, Spyro just kind of like yeah. jittered around on that save slot for a bit. It was probably like the collision date or something. I always thought it was weird, the norks in, the, in these levels all have like, uh, headphones on. That music that they listen to. Probably thrashing. Uh, that's a good question. Because they're monsters. 
Oh yeah, they do have. They probably listen. They're probably listening to Infinite Steam right now. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they're the type of low-life scum who listens to Cannibal Corpse. <laughs> oh no, hold on. <laughs> My friend likes Cannibal Corpse, I'll have you know. Uh, I'm a- He's actually- I'm a massive metalhead, but I can't stand Cannibal Corpse because they are just so obnoxious, I find. I come blood from my erection. Is that actually a line? Yeah, um, Ethan played it. Uh, Eric, Ethan played that song during Mega Man 3, remember? No, I don't remember that. It was so bad that I had to censor it. <laughs> and then then Frank like took it and edited farts over it, because that was back when Ethan didn't like me putting farts in the videos. Meanwhile, all the playthroughs that Ethan seems to edit have the fart ending samples. The yeah. dynamo fart, fart. ending. <laughs> well, um, well, Exo, you're a whiny bitch gamer. The intro to that, that's a fart cover of the Irate Gamers theme, isn't it? Yeah. Of course it is. That's what it is. I fucking <laughs> love that. I. It's like the perfect kind of fart joke. <laughs> 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 Time for a patented frustration montage. Time for a patented whiny bitch frustration montage. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making that. <laughs> I bet you were probably smiling real hard past the Batman mask. Ooh, Xbox. Would you believe, like, I, an Xbox game? Ew. <laughs> Oh wait, that was Ethan's line. He's the one who said that. <laughs> oh, yeah. that uh, just one, one other thing. Um, okay, you know how you click on group and then uh, remove from or, or clear, I guess, to separate a video from the audio? Is there a way to sync them back? Oh, up? yeah. Uh, well, no, hold on. Uh, hold on. So what what are you trying to do here? What 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 did you just do? Well, I realized that in the file that I guess I copied from, um, the audio and the video somehow wound up being separated. So now I'm going back to this one where you can. Oh no! Okay, so here's out. what you need to do is um. So did you did you follow my suggestion where you went right click properties then play speed and you set it to one right? Yes, I've been doing that to a few clips. Alright, so you need to do kind of the same thing for the audio, too, and then that should automatically resync it. Alright, uh, clicking on properties, um... And then there, there should be, like, stretch mode or something, and that will be, like, oh, wait, none, classic, says, or elastic. It says, um, original length and new length, and they're different. Yeah, let's see, there you go, it's trying to, it's, it's trying to resample it. So do I change yeah. it better to, do I just make them the same? Um, okay, so it should be, there should be like, stretch mode or something like that, stretch under properties. Modes. Yeah, and then set that to none, or original, or, yeah. And then that should, then you should see like the, the audio clip like, catch up to the video clip after you do that. Right. Oh, you, sir, are an I have not. I have not played PN03 for the GameCube. I don't think I've heard of it before. What, what's it like? Is it good? Let's see. Well, I guess we're gonna go to the. We're gonna he head on over to the friggin. You friggin' fricks. Friggin frackin frick. Thank you for releasing me. <laughs> Thank you, Borsha! Ah. I wanted to make my next video about, like, Pokemon and how, like, I don't know, it's kind of weird how Pokemon always re-releases stuff, but people didn't really seem to knock it that much until lately with, like, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon and how that's, you know, basically Sun and Moon, but better now they can do 
Pokemon where they take out content and save it for the third game in a generation, you know. I want to do a video on that. But I don't have 3DS capture, and I feel like that bit, that... It's kind of hard to make a video. Well, if it's, if it's just going to be like an editorial and you just need flavor footage, essentially, you can probably just do what Nick used to do and just download someone else's footage and credit other people. Eh, I, I don't know about that. I, I don't know if I'd want to go through the trouble of doing that, because imagine if one of those people just got butthurt or something that I used their footage and just, uh... Well, usually people don't mind if you credit them. I don't know. Maybe, yeah. I mean, I would be able to record games from, like, Gen 1 to mm, 3, maybe maybe 5, if I could somehow get a DS emulator, but, uh... I, I don't know, it's been years since I've tried DS emulation, because I remember it not working very well at all. It's... it's... it's in a pretty good spot now. Really? That's yeah. Good. Like, there's one called DS Emu Me or something like that. Yeah, back in my day, that worked like shit. Uh, it's it's in a better place now. Like it, Mario 64 DS looks pretty well on it. That's good. He's back. Oh uh, shit! Where? I mean, what did I miss? Or the uh, dolphin works pretty fine, at least for GameCube games on my computer. So, like, I should be fine. I don't know, maybe I could do that, but that would also require me to play one of those games again, which I suppose I'd have no problems with, but that's a time sink. Oh, uh, just another reason to grab footage. Yeah. My next review is a bit weird, for what I'm planning next. I'm already recording all the footage. Hmm, do tell. Well, I would tell you, but uh, I, I was gonna... Well... Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna officially announce it today because I made a thumbnail for it already, but uh, then all the Sonic Forces shit came up, and then Chester oh. died from Lincoln Park, and I don't know. Oh shit! Yeah, I heard about that. May I think I'd want to announce that tomorrow. Man, I, I haven't been a fan of uh, of Lincoln Park for a while, but like that just bumped me that, out. That breaks my heart, really. It's like I, I remember seeing this one drawing on I think snafu.com. Yeah, the situation normal all uh, left up. It's a webcomic site. And there was this one that was poking fun of Lincoln Park. And this was several years ago. And it was just a character listening to crawling in my skin. And they were like in their bed, completely surrounded by laser blades. Yeah, I sort of implied they were just like you know, just some edgy team pretending to be on the verge of suicide, but not really be. And now you hear about this, and it's like, oh dang, you kind of have to take this stuff seriously, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's... it's like, it's not, not funny anymore to make it, those kind of jokes. It like, sucks, because oh, Lincoln Park, everyone jokes about it, but yeah, it's not... It's kind of hard to make fun of it now. Clearly, clearly there was something going on behind the scenes that we didn't know about that kind of play and how the music were music right. made. Yeah. Uh, I wish I knew enough about Linkin Park to know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> well, like, they're I just like a super edgy band, uh, or at least they used to be super edgy in the 90s. Not now so much. They, like, sort of toned down. Uh, but people yeah. mostly remember them for their older work, mostly. Fun of them, like oh, the good tryhards they are. <laughs> they are the they are the quintessential um, uh, three edgy five U band. <laughs> yeah. Oh. All right, we got got the last flying section done. In the whole game. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Well, well, I mean, or in the I think there is another one, and I think there are two more. No, there's one more. Uh, I used to oh, the geez, I nastiest world does not have one. I accidentally clicked on the volume of the stream, so it's like I heard us all talking twice, like <laughs> over each other. I heard two mics, two me's. I used to, I used to listen to quite a lot of uh, Lincoln Park. In fact, call upon me, and I could probably recite the entirety of In the End. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I could do that, but my child—it was a part of my childhood. 
yes. Mm-hmm. Just because that's the kind of music I was introduced to. Mm-hmm. Also, it's nice, I just realized this morning when I was setting up the stream that uh, OBS has built in compressors and noise gates now. Yeah. Which is. Yeah. Which is a feature I, I really wish they had, like, even a year ago. So I, I use VST host to compress my voice it's, uh, for these streams. Oh yeah, that's a question I've been meaning to ask. Uh, I literally just got OBS to download, or not download, uh, record the game that I'm, I'm currently recording. Because, uh, spoiler mm. alert, I'm using the big E for it. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, what system is it for? Uh, GBA. And oh. the footage actually does well. Okay, to me, anyway, the footage looks good. Uh, I'm sure there's a whole bunch of technical stuff I could probably do to make the game look better. I see a whole bunch of, like... Uh, I can... I can give you some advice on that after the stream. Yeah, but one thing about it is that I decided to record some footage with this game uh, while I was in a Skype call because one of my friends refuses to. Oh, and it, it included the it Skype included audio. Skype audio, which. Uh, it's that's because it's taking the audio from your desktop. Right, and I was wondering if there's some way without me having to fuck with like sound chips and shit to uh, somehow get that to not happen. I tried looking all around OBS to make us that, hey, could you just record like this one window, please? But like, I found nothing. Um... Maybe this hasn't really been a problem for you guys though, but I, I don't know. Well, usually, usually I, I'm not talking to people when I'm recording yeah. footage. <laughs> It's a good thing though, I'm, I'm, I'm probably not really going to be using much of this game's audio in the video. Yeah, but it's going to be a pain in the butt to be <laughs> trying to find gameplay clips and then hearing I, I, IKG's voice <laughs> in the background. Yeah. But you know, um, it's like one of the reasons why for years I've... Uh, I would very rarely have the game's audio playing because it is constantly changing, and especially if a character is in the game to talk and they're speaking at the same time as you are. Um, I find it's easier to just take a song from the game and play it for a few minutes. And right. if you're focusing on a certain aspect of the game, like how pretty it is, you might pick one of the softer tunes. Or if you're talking about the combat, you might pick some of the you know, edgier music. Yeah, I'm, I much prefer to use music uh, behind my voice rather than gameplay footage. And in the case of a guy like me, where my computer's fan is very loud and my microphone isn't that good and it picks up a lot of airy noises, um, just playing music uh, constantly can dampen that a lot. It, it can almost completely hide that so that people can just focus on your voice and not the that the microphone's picking up from. Yeah, I guess. Well, that's all you need for that is a noise gate. What's that? Basically, what a noise Ooh, gate is, spiral. is you what? set it to a certain decibel level, and anything that goes above that threshold will be included in the video, but anything that's below that will not be. And I find that the sweet spot is usually like negative 42, negative 45 decibels. So the idea is that whenever you're not talking and all that's coming in is noise, you you set it, you set the threshold on the noise gate low enough so that that noise isn't coming through, in the mm. from the recording, mm. and that so it does all the work for you, so you don't have to manually cut out all the noise yourself. I also like to use spectral subtraction to remove uh, the no- noise profile from my voice, so you're just getting the frequencies from my voice. I only recommend that though if you can minimize the noise. Is this a thing you you can do to video clips in Sunny Vegas, or is this something you have to set on your microphone? Uh, this is something you have to do in an audio editor. Yeah. Oh, actually, okay. if you're talking about spectral, spectral subtraction, you can't do in Vegas. Noise gate, you can just put on the track in Vegas. Okay. No, I personally like to I personally like to do it in an editor instead, so that the 
I can just plop in the track and just have it work. But you uh, you can do it you can do it in the editor you can do it in your audio editor or your video editor. I might have to do it in the video editor because here's the, the thing is it's a stupid thing that happened the the other day I ended up like wasting the entire morning just trying to get Sony Vegas to open without crashing because apparently one of the many files that I put in the timeline that I saved as a VEG file was making it crash. Every time I tried to load it, it's like it would load some clip and be like, nope. And I, I ended up having to work around it by, um, I don't even know, remember Importing how. every clip one by one? Nope, thank goodness I did not have to do that. Oh, is it crashing uh, while it's trying to, uh, render, uh, what are they called? Peaks for your clips? Uh, yes, but even when I tried to cancel doing that, it, it still didn't work. Okay, here's oh. here's what I think I did. You know how you've got the all media section? I think I clicked the VEG file, dragged it into that bin, and it ended up being clumped together as one big file, where I couldn't edit any of the little files that were in it. It was like I'd already rendered it. It's just like I couldn't upload it as a video to any site. So that stunk. Anyway. I guess I just didn't know if it was still possible to make that change. Uh, yeah, it'll it'll be it'll honestly at this point, like it's literally as simple as clicking on like the uh, the green plus button on the track for your voiceover, and then just there should even be a noise gate on it already. And by default, you just have to set the value. So if you just click the plus on the on your voiceover track should see like the uh, audio plugins list come up then you just go and select um God, what's it what's it called uh, 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 noise gate should be the one in the far left and you just raise up the number on the slider until I'd say try it at like negative 45 to start with unfortunately and that unfortunately uh this does this version of Sony Vegas doesn't have any like it has the folders, but none of them have anything in them. Oh well. Well, what do you mean by that? You mean that you don't have any plugins at all? Not for the audio, apparently. Um, another version of Sony Vegas I had did. Well, yeah, that does. What version do you have? Sony Vegas Pro 13. So you have the Pro version. Oh, um, yeah, you should like if you have the pro version, then you should definitely have those plugins. Right, I don't know work. what what the deal is. I mean, you know, I have to figure this out behind this behind the scenes afterwards. Yeah. All right. Oh, uh, I should probably look at the chat again. Sorry, I was Silent X. I was folding to my. God, I can't feed that. What does that say? Does the stream does the stream even still work? Yeah. Okay, good. Because it stopped on my... No, no, it's still working on my end. Alright, good. I mean, I've pretty much been silent for okay. the past 15 minutes because I have nothing to add to what you guys are saying. Technical mumbo-jumbo. Yeah. Oh, nothing I could add of intelligence. Let's see. Uh, I, the problem is that I can't read that because it's zoomed in, scaled down. Sorry, I was silent XO. I was talking to my cousin to see which of Sonic 1 I should do for my Road to Sonic Mania, and he says the Android version, which is good, because the Android of Sonic 1 is the definitive version of the game. Yeah, looks like I all we got left is the boss. Oh, and I don't remember where the bo Oh, Metalhead, yeah. That's metal, bro. Toasty! Uh, fuck, I remember... Remember when I was filming my, my review of Spiral 1, like, uh... The, the cutaway clip was just me thrashing my head to, to music when I mentioned Metalhead. Mm. And I actually, I actually, like, hurt my neck, I was doing it so hard, and my glasses went flying <laughs> mid-clip. <laughs> oh, so funny. Did you, did you keep that in the video? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, sorry for my writing because I'm the pinnacle of a rush job. 
Oh, uh, no, it's not your writing that was the problem. Instead, uh, my preview window for the stream makes the text too small to read. That's what the problem is. Um, is yeah, and the, the song I chose specifically for that clip was The Industrialist by Fear Factory. Hmm. Oh, wait, there's a band called Fear, Fear Factory? Factory? Oh, yeah. That always pops up whenever I try to find the DKC uh, track. Yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, they. Yeah, because I was I was thinking of the DKC track when you said yeah. that. Um. Well, if you if you want to hear Fear Factory, but like, but like you don't want to go full thrash. There's a they have, they have a cover of the song Cars. You know that one's like here in my car, I feel safe as a ball. You know that one. Oh. Yeah, they, they did a cover of it, and it it was it was in a, a late '90s game. Uh, Something five, I don't know. Space Channel Five. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that was the one, Jim. <laughs> that would be a fun time, though. <laughs> and also, they have a music video, and it's the most nineties thing ever. Uh, so they have skateboards and they're going off ramps and everything. Not quite that thing. But they're, and they have their jorts on. Do they have attitude? Well, of course they did. Mm. Uh, and then President Bill Clinton comes out <laughs> later in the in the movie. I love Fear Factory. It's still one of my favorite DKC songs of all time. I agree there, Victor. Oh, uh, Test Drive 6 was the game that it appeared in. Test Drive 6. Yes, I didn't even know there was a Test Drive 1 for 5, let alone a 6. It's like, it's like, you know, it's like Mario, Mario 64. It's like, where are the other, like, what, 60, <laughs> 60 games or whatever? Granted, granted yeah. you have about 64 Mario games at this point, but that's besides the point. I wonder if I could count, uh, like, all of the Mario games, including spin-offs and Donkey Kong and Yoshi kind of games. I wonder if that would oh, add God. up to 63 at that time. Good luck. <laughs> you, have to, you also have to include Mario's Missing and uh, Mario <laughs> Keyboard Preschool Years. And Mario's Time Machine. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to play Goldfish? To... Okay, uh, let's a play of the Goldfish. Have you seen the weed? <laughs> Mario thinks you're great. Alright guys, let's play a game. Where is the cheat? <laughs> the cheat is behind the frickin' box! <laughs> Do you want I to Mario Stein? This big robot is all charged up to meet That you. sounds like a pickup line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeb Jeb gets all the ladies. He's beating them off with a stick. Yeah, with my rod of something. Your rod no, I mean, of power! <laughs> I like to imagine on your first date you're you'd just be saying, I can't believe what they're doing with that infinite character. <laughs> Yeah, Jeb, you're at your plus 69 uh, rod of penetration. <laughs> yeah, I think my first date's probably gonna go like this. So, uh, like, I was on the forums last night, and I, I can't believe what I saw about classic Sonic. And then they're gonna dump me, like, and then, instantly. No, she just, like, slowly, like, lowers to the ground, just, like, and starts crawling away. <laughs> Well, I know that's uh, I know that there are approximately twelve Spyro games if you're not counting the Flash games. I wouldn't. Most of which don't exist anymore. Though there is one. Are you counting uh, Skywinder games too? No, I said Spyro games, not not fucking shitty ass. Uh, but the like first one like was called oh! Skywinder's Spyro's Adventure. Yes, not. Spyro Adventures in Skyland, he was in the subtitle, therefore it's not his game. 
God damn it. I thought he was like the main character in the show. I've heard, yeah, I've heard the the show it was good. I I have no interest though. Well, at that rate, I'm not sure because like if the character's not, if like let's say Sonic isn't the main character of Shadow of a Hedgehog, isn't that still a Sonic game by technicality? If it's in the Sonic universe, I suppose it's in the Sonic cinematic universe. Yeah. We're gonna get a new Sonic movie every year until we're all dead. <laughs> and one of them is gonna show how how classic Sonic fell into a wormhole and ended up in an alternate dimension. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, that begs the question, though. Is so is Sonic Boom technically a, a, a Sonic game? No, it's a Sonic Boom game. Hmm. Touche. I don't. I don't. Yeah, it was it was meant to be a separate thing. It was meant to be a separate thing. Um, it was not meant to be part of the main series, although people have decent enough evidence to suggest maybe it was at some point. Uh, but I personally it bothers me when people try to make Boom out to be like the sequel to Lost World and complain about how the game plays the same when I don't know. Uh, I don't know how anybody could... What? That's actually a thing? It, yeah, people who are like, why doesn't it play like a Sonic game? I'm like, well, it's because it's a spin-off. That, that's just the way I've always looked at it. I don't... Yeah. Wow. Uh, I didn't actually forget how you get up to this ledge. I remember this this particular jump taking forever in the old... It, it's surprising how much I remember all this shit. Oh, I didn't think you got this far in the game. No, no. What I mean is that I remember you... Uh, in the original oh. Zebras playthrough, this jump took like forever. There you go. Okay. Apparently, it's like impossible in the Japanese version or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of things are impossible in the Japanese version because of that fucking camera. Have you guys seen uh, Crystal Fisher's um, his playthrough of that game? No. No. It's the he's the He's the guy with that Depeche Mode sounding voice, right? I believe so. Yeah. yeah, he did a playthrough. He did a playthrough of the Japanese Spyro one, and the camera is like nauseating. <laughs> Which is ironic because they were trying to do the opposite of that, yeah. right? Because like they the people, all the Japanese people who were playing the the game were saying that it gave them 3D sickness, so that's why they changed the camera. But I guess the irony is that in doing so, they made it worse. Yeah. Well, for us at least. I mean, it, it hovers like. 12 feet above you, and then like rotates really weirdly. That's really weird. Yeah, I I, I would look it up. It, it's really yeah, just why. Hmm. So that, my friends, was Beast Makers. That took us exactly an hour. Woo so we're going to skip ahead now to the next. Oh, oh, we're gonna we're gonna stop recording for just a moment. I'm going to go collect some snacks or something. Because I need a little pick-me-up here. Maybe I'll go brew some coffee. Get some um, a good swig of that voltage. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that thing that Alec will never forgive me for. <laughs> for as long as I live. What? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drink some actual 3D coffee. <laughs> um, by the way, TGX, you had the best actual 3D avatars joke of all. Uh, good. I, I, <laughs> that's what I was going for. <laughs> Thank you. Mm. Alright, so, yeah. We're gonna stick up the end slide here. We are not done. I'm just gonna take a quick break, and I'll be right back. Alright, folks. I'm, I'm gonna head out now. See you guys. See you, uh, Nick. All right. for the yep. help. See you, Today's Nick. It's just been a screwed up day, but I'll live there if you want tomorrow sometime. Yeah, um... Yeah, so... I know, but don't render until you and I have a chance to talk. And see if we can't find out where those plugins are. Okay. Alright. 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 Alright, okay. here comes the end slide, folks.
Oh!